Hello, welcome to a new adventure. And today, it's the first for me, I'm at Legoland in Windsor. Now, I've never been to a Lego park ever in my life, and I've never been to this one. So it's a bit shameful that I've never been here, but I'm here today, so I'm making up for that. Now, I know it's a bit of a kids sort of family park, but I'm still looking forward to checking it out and seeing what the hype is all about, because this is Britain's most visited theme park currently. And a lot of vloggers have been here many times. I have never been. So I'm looking forward to checking it out for the first time and seeing what it's like. The first thing you see when you head through the main entrance is this spectacular view, which, because you come in on the hillside and the park is basically down in that valley there. And straight away, right on the horizon, just up here somewhere, you can see Windsor Castle proudly on the hill there. And I've never seen Windsor Castle close up, so I need to sort that out one day. I've seen it off the motorway, that's about it. Anyway, we've got to head down this hill now which is very steep, all the way to the bottom. And there is a train as well, if you're worried about the hill, there is an actual train that goes down. So I think we should check out the funicular railway because that's what it is. I mean, I could walk, but when there's a funicular railway, or the hill train, as it's known, I may as well get on here and get a ride at the same time. So I'll see you at the bottom. Imagine that this will be a godsend coming back up this hill. And I can imagine everybody's going to think the same thing as well. But yeah, I just wanted to check it out, get a ride on it. And yeah, technically, I think it is a funicular railway. Yeah, it definitely is a funicular. We've got a passing point and everything. There's the former rapid drive, which is now closed. It looks a bit um, cheap, that. It's not a very nice looking rapids. It looks a bit, um, yeah, old, but it's not. It's fairly new as well, and they've closed it down. And it won't be reopening. Okay, we've made it down to the bottom end of the park. And I've absolutely no idea where I'm going because, like I said, I've never been here. I'm not looking at a map on purpose because I want to just discover it myself. I think the first thing I want to go to is the new roller coasters that opened this year, which I think are called the Minifigure Speedway. It's a dueling racing uh, hillside coaster, which opened literally a few months ago. So I'm going to head over to that. I think it's sort of the back end of the park. I did see it from the hill. Yeah, that was a nice little funicular ride down the hill. And in case you didn't know, Legoland Windsor used to be Windsor Safari Park. So if you've been to Windsor Safari Park in the 80s or before, then you've been here before pretty much. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but a lot of my videos have featured a guy called John Broom, who uh, the guy that started Alton Towers. He had an involvement with the Battersea Power Station project. He also had uh, an involvement with American Adventure. Well, he also had an involvement here with uh, Windsor Safari Park. So everywhere I go, that guy follows me around. <laughs> anyway, I'm just entering, well, I've no idea where. <laughs> I've just made it down to the Coast Guard section or the driving school ride. Uh, I'm just gonna walk around, I think, and see what I find. But what I do know is it's actually really quiet today. Everything I've seen online before, this place has been absolutely rammed. Like I said, it is Britain's most popular theme park, especially with the kids and the families. And it is very, very busy. But today, it looks really quiet. And that could be because it's raining and it's midweek. So uh, yeah, good timing probably. It means I can probably get on everything I need to. Just heading into Duplo Valley which I think is the kids, like the tiny tots area. Um, I'm heading for Minifigure Speedway. I know it's up here somewhere. Uh, I can see it there on the hill. So I was right, it was this way. So we'll just head up there and have a ride, or two rides, because I want the credits. I need to get both sides. And then I'll let you know 
what I think of it. It's got some wacky rides here. One thing I do know is that there are a lot of rides here, so that's good because it does eat up the queues. Now, technically, this is a credit. It's called the Duplo Dino Coaster. I think I need to have a go just to get the credit. But it's like for little tots. <laughs> Can't believe my first ride at Legoland was a tots coaster. <laughs> anyway, I've got the credit. Don't need to ever go on that again. Um, but one thing I must say, considering it only opened, what, two years ago, three years ago? It's looking really grubby, that ride. Every piece of theming on there has got, like, uh, green moss and, yeah, stains all over it. It just could do with just a wipe. Doesn't even need a jet wash, just a cloth to wipe it and uh, get the jet washer out if you can, if you can be bothered. Yeah, that's what I always find with Merlin Parks. They're well done, well executed, but they're always, like, left to rot away and look not their best. If this were my place, I'd be sending the staff round all the time with cloths to wipe everything down. Anyway, minifigure speedway right here. Let's get on that. Two credits for me here. Nice big uh, minifigure there. It's not really mini, is it? <laughs> yeah, this is brand new for 2024. It's a dueling coaster, which starts on the hillside up there. And then, uh, yeah, they race each other. I think the queue's up here somewhere, from what I remember on the vlogs. Like I say, I've seen a lot of vlogs of this place, but I've never been. So I kind of formed an opinion of it before I even came, which is not a good thing. But my initial opinion was that it's a really good park. It's big, but it was on the tacky side and a bit cheap looking. But so far, it doesn't look that bad. It looks better in person than it does on videos, but there is a few things that I would change straight away. So anyway, let's head on Minifigure Speedway. I'll go on the right hand side first and then try the left. And I've got to say already, I'm not liking the look of this queue line. It looks a bit brutalist, if I'm being honest. I know it's supposed to be a crash barrier, but it's just a, I think it's a cop-out way of putting cheap fencing up and uh, concrete walls. I, mean, I suppose at least it's painted, but yeah, it's not the best looking queue line. It looks a bit like a construction site. Yeah, straight on, everything's walk-on today, which is good to see. So basically, uh, you start your ride on these hills here and then make your way down the drop and through the layout and then you do it all in reverse. All right, let's get on. So we're gonna go for the orange side first. All stars. Cross the bridge at the side of the drop. So you can see the uh, all four drops just there. At the side of us. And we're straight on. Let's go at the back, why not? My ride is complete. That was pretty decent, to be honest. Definitely a family coaster, but it's, yeah, it's pretty good for a family coaster. I've just looked at my own ride picture. I look really miserable on it. I'm just stood, sat there like this. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, some good intense sections on there. A little pop of air time on it. Um, yeah, very nippy, very good. Probably, from what everybody said, the best roller coaster here at Legoland. So I'll let you know at the end if that's true, but I've got a feeling it will be. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it was uh, super scary, but for kids it'll be quite intense, quite good. Yeah, I've got to try the other side now, the blue side, because uh, I need both credits. And I might even have a few goes later on in different seats. So I sat right on the back row there. And I've got to say as well, it was very, very smooth. I mean, it would be for a brand new coaster. I believe it's made by Zira who uh, have been making coasters for a long, long time. You will have all probably been on a Zero coaster at some point. And uh, yeah, this is like their modern version of one. Uh, very good, actually. There we go. Both sides done. I've got to say I preferred the blue side, the Legends side, just slightly. I liked the little S bend before the hill. So it uh, pulled a few more forces. So yeah, I preferred that one, only just. 
But yeah, it's a good little ride, I love it. It's uh, quite thrilling actually, it's not too bad. Probably, like I said, the most intense ride in the park, but we'll find out. Uh, I'm glad I've done it, got two credits there, tick, tick. Um, I've no idea where I'm gonna head now, so I think possibly, I don't know, over to the Dragon Coaster, because another credit. Maybe we'll get all the credits, and then once I've finished, I can then chill out a little bit. And, uh, we're, and then we can have a little tour around Miniland as well, because I forgot about that. So Miniland, if you don't know, is where all the Lego figures are, with the little model village, with a lot of the uh, sites there, right in front of us. So that's Miniland, we will take a thorough look at that later. But yeah, I'm gonna go hunt out the Dragon Coaster and then keep moving on. At this rate, we'll probably be finished by dinner time. It's actually really, really quiet here, which is fantastic. I think there's more staff than people, there really is. And it's because it's midweek out of the holidays and the weather is so poor. It's actually quite chilly and it's raining or drizzly. Now, it could get better this afternoon, which will be a nice bonus. But anyway, I'm going into the Ninjago area and uh, may as well have a go on some of the rides here and make my way down to the Dragon, get my next credit. Yeah, let's have a wander around Ninjago. So this is uh, obviously based on a, a Lego set of some sort and uh, it's very Oriental themed. Hence the buildings and the uh, long ship there or the whatever they call them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's head on Ninjago the ride, which I think is a bit of a shooty ride. A bit like um, Toy Story Mania at Disney, if you've been on that, where you use your hands to skim discs or something. That was pretty decent, that. So the ride system was very uh, good, very uh, decent. The only thing I couldn't get to grips with was the shooting malarkey. And then you've got to sort of use your hands like this across the sensors to fire these discs. But I just couldn't get it right. I got the odd one or two, but couldn't. it just seemed to like pick and choose when it did it. And uh, I tried different speeds and everything. I just couldn't get the hang of it. I even watched somebody else on the train behind just to try see what they were doing. They were doing what I were doing, but just couldn't quite get to grips with it. But really liked the ride system. The theming in there was pretty decent, but it is just uh, basically a screen-based ride, just like Toy Story Mania. So I wasn't expecting anything more, to be honest. One thing I've noticed about this place, it's not easy to navigate. A lot of the pathways are hidden around the back of things and they're very narrow entrances, so you think that there wouldn't be anything down there, but there is. Um, well, while we're here, we may as well try Laser Raiders, which I think, again, is a shooty ride uh, with a laser gun this time. Right, let's head on. I suppose one good thing about this park, because it has just started raining again outside, there is a lot of indoor rides, which is really good. So it does help in the British weather, whereas the Alton Towers and many other places, there aren't many indoor things to do. But here, there's an awful lot. Well, this is a big cattle, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully I don't have to go through all of it. it looks like I do. Yeah, again, nobody here at all. Absolutely dead. This is one long queue line. <laughs> what I do like about this queue, they've got a little kids' play area in the middle there, in this little arena. And while the parents queue all the way around the building, the kids can go play in there. Which I think is pretty good, to be honest. Anyway, I have no idea what to expect on this ride. I can't recall ever seeing a POV of it either, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, that was okay. Probably the best kind of shooty ride we've got in the UK because all the others are kind of retrofitted. That was purposely built, so it worked a bit better. The strange thing is, in the queue line, you've got to cross the railway tracks, the miniature railway, which is very weird. It kind of stopped you and then crossed you over the tracks and then you carried on queuing on the other side, which I thought was very unique. Yeah, the actual ride, you never really notice because you're too busy shooting, so you never notice anything that's going on, really. Them kind of rides, are especially like Jewel at Alton Towers when that was open. I used to like just uh, going around and sitting there and watching rather than shooting because you lose, you can't really see everything that's going on. But I mean, it was okay, yeah. Quite well themed in there. Um, quite short actually for a ride here. Normally they're a bit longer than that. Very short and uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say about it really. Oh, and I forgot to say the guns hurt your fingers. <laughs> just a button on that one. 
but my finger was hurting from doing all that. I'm just crossing the railway track now, as you can see. But yeah, the queue line is just up there and it crosses the railway track for the uh, laser raiders. Anyway, uh, what we got now? Zampelli Disco. Yeah, may as well give that a go, why not? I actually didn't know they had a Zampelli Disco. Mia's Riding Adventure. Yeah, I never knew that they had one of these. Oh my God, screaming kids everywhere. Probably the most basic Zampella disco I've seen in the UK. No wonder they've hidden it behind this big white fence. It's just a green structure. The car's quite well themed up. Got some friends here that just want to say hi. Hello! Hello. Hello. Subscribe! Subscribe! <laughs> they know. Leave a like. That was pretty good for a Zampella disco. We've got a really good cycle on there as well. Went for about a good three minutes or so. Well, I've got to say, when you're riding it, the view's not the best. Overlooking all the staff areas at the back. Stick a few conifer trees up and block it out. That's what I would do. But there was a little kid next to me, absolutely terrified on that. He was clinging on for dear life. I made him feel a bit better. I told him it's gonna go a lot higher yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him it's gonna <laughs> go another 10 minutes. But no, he was absolutely terrified. And then uh, at the end, he was acting all brave, you know, like they do. Oh, it was good that, I wanna go on it again. I wanna go on it again. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> anyway, nice little section here over the lake. I believe they do shows on here, uh, like a stunt show. See if it's gonna happen today, probably not, but there are people milling around and there's a lot of people sat down, so maybe there is. I would have thought on off-peak days like this, I wouldn't have done it, but brilliant if they do. Anyway, wee wee time and coffee time. So I'll catch up with you shortly. It turns out there is no show on today. They're just rehearsing for the summer season, no doubt. They all just sort of sat around practicing their moves. Well, I've had my coffee and my wee stop. So we're going to head into Mythica now, which is right to my left, and check out the new flying theatre and also the new area, which I think opened last year, or maybe the year, might have been the year before, actually, uh, 22. And, uh, yeah, it's still quiet, but it's just started drizzling again, a bit of a, a horrible rain, and it's just dropped in temperature. It's actually really chilly now. But anyway, I'll pan you round and we'll head into Lego Mythica. There we go. So like I said, this is the brand new area for 2022, I believe. So, quite a few Lego figures around, all over the place. If you're into Lego, you'll love this place. Hence it being Legoland. <laughs> that was a stupid thing to say. But anyway, I'm gonna head down to the uh, Flying Theatre now. I'm not 100% sure where it is. I think it's at the bottom somewhere. I say I've not been here before. We've got the two kids drop towers over there. Oh, there it is. That's the flying theater down there. I'm going to give this a whirl as well. The, uh, in fact, no, we'll go on this first. It's like the jet ski ride that spins round. I'll give that a go. Hydra's challenge, I think it's called. Yeah, let's head on here first and then we'll go do the flying theater. I might even do the drop tower since, why not? <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad here actually. Um, crowd wise, I mean, it's picked up a little bit now, but only just. I mean, everything's still pretty much, as you can see, walk on, five minute queue, but there isn't a queue, just down the steps there. So it's very quick. Well, that was actually really good fun. I quite enjoyed that. A lot faster than what I thought it would be. So you just turn the wheel to keep yourself in the middle and then when you spin it to the right, you swing right out, a bit like a whip. Remember the old whip rides? Very similar to that, but on water. And I got a bit moist as well. I had to keep my hood up. No, it was good fun. So we've got a button here to soak people with the jets. So let's try, give them a soaking. My, my jet's right here, ready? Yes! <laughs> Got him. Let's try again. <laughs> Seems to get the same guy every time. <laughs> I am a big kid at heart. 
pressing buttons to soak people. <laughs> but what surprises me most about Merlin is it's free. Normally these uh, shooty bits on the rapids and stuff at Merlin attractions, they charge you a quid for. But no, it's free here, buttons all the way around. You just press it and soak everyone. Anyway, let's head to Flight of the Sky, Flight of the Sky Lion, which is the indoor uh, flying theater because it's just started raining. So try get in there while it's wet and I'll let you know my thoughts when we get off. Okay, and only a 10 minute queue for this, so good timing really. Well, 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 that was a nice little surprise. That's probably the best flying theater ride I've done outside of Disney. And uh, I've done the Europa Park one as well and uh, wasn't keen on that, but that was fantastic. Um, probably the best ride I've had so far at Legoland. And I uh, can't see anything else here that's gonna beat that really. So for me, that's probably not far off um, the minifigure speedway, I'd say that just tops it. That was really good quality. I was in a good seat though. I was right in the middle, uh, on the middle tier as well. So I had this perfect view of the screen. I can't imagine if you were on the top row, you'd have got as good a view as I did. But yeah, really impressed with that. Really good. Uh, great video as well. Some more rides like that, please, Merlin. At Alton Towers and other places, because that's a good filler attraction. Really good. Thumbs up from me. Where we're going now, I have no idea. Let's keep moving around. But I've just got to say, this Mythica section for me is also the best themed area at Legoland. Again, I've not seen everything, but I really like that area. It's, it looks very new, modern, which I suppose it is, but it's definitely the best area so far I've seen here. Okay, we're in the pirate area now. Now you've got the spinning spider ride over there, up on your round. Which is like a teacups kind of ride or a drunken barrels sort of thing. And then pirate ship just down there. And we've got a big boat ride, a uh, water ride down here. So I might go give that a go first. Music's very loud in here. I think this is one of the older areas of the park. You can kind of tell. It's well themed though, but you can tell it's older because it's a bit, um, He's a bit of TLC, shall we say. So yeah, we've got a big drop boat water ride over here. Let's give it a go. So we've actually got a log flume at a Merlin Park. Well, blow me down. <laughs> I seem to be getting rid of them all. It's an actual, it's not very big, but actual log ride. Darren's toilet review. Well, so far, every single toilet I've been in here, it's been absolutely spotless. Again, that were really modern toilet and they all smell like bubble gum. Yeah, theme park toilets are not normally the best, but here they've all been pretty decent. There you go, Darren's toilet review. Let's head on Pirate Falls. Why not? It's raining anyway, so I as well get wet. I'll just put my head up. And uh, yeah, I've got to go on everything while I'm here because I probably won't come back here for quite a few years now. Like I said, I've never been before, so there's no reason for me to come back once I've experienced all the rides. Here we go. Well, it looks like I won't be riding the pirate boat ride because you can't ride it on your own, apparently. He said, you need to go bring someone with you. I was like, well, I'm on my own. Um, I can't just conjure somebody out the air to come and, you know, walk in Legoland and come on the ride with me. I'm uh, 250 miles from home. <laughs> But anyway, I might just loiter and see if anyone goes in and I might be able to tag along with them. Yeah, that's a bit of a stupid rule, really. Um, I don't know why that is. Maybe weight issues in the boat, I don't know, but that is just bizarre. Never, ever had that on a water ride before, ever. So, uh, yeah, very strange, but I'll we'll see if I get on it or not. Well, I finally got on it. I was uh, stood at the entrance for a few minutes uh, asking a few people if I could tag along with them. And as it turns out, uh, one or two of them give me a bit of a dirty look, like, why? I did explain to them, and then a couple just completely blanked me as they walked past. But uh, a lovely fella with his child let me on, so I sat behind them. But I'll tell you what, that was an absolute bloody soaker. <laughs> I'm drenched. 
It wasn't the drop either. The drop was just nothing more than a little splash. It was the actual fountains and the jets that were squirting. They were directed right at you on the boat. And they weren't even like just missing you or hitting the side. They were squirting right in the face. I'm absolutely drenched. Oh, my bottom's soaked as well, everything. Anyway, it started raining now anyway, so I've got to get wet. Now let's head for my final credit today, which is the uh, Dragon Coaster. There we go, so the Knight's Kingdom Castle with the Dragon Roller Coaster. So I'll try and get on that, and then we've got the Dragon's Apprentice over here. Oh, I forgot, that's another credit there. So two more credits. So let's head up and have a ride on the Dragon. Nice little courtyard, this. It's like Windsor Castle, so we'll head, where are we, over here. So yeah, I believe um, this is one of the original rides as well that was here when the park opened. And uh, I think it can be found at all the Legoland parks. I do like the queue line for this. You walk around the castle turrets around the top. I can imagine in summer it gets very busy on this. But yeah, that water ride would have been ideal for a hot day. Uh, they do, well, they used to have a rapids as well, like I said at the beginning of the video, but that's now gone. They scrapped it for some reason. It's fairly new as well, probably 10, 10, 11, 12 years old, something like that. And they've got rid of it already. So maybe it wasn't, uh, I and mean, it was popular, but maybe it was a bit temperamental for them. Anyway. I think we're almost there. So I'll uh, speak to you when we get off the ride and let you know what I think. That's pretty decent, that. I'm going back round for another go, as soon as there's no queue. Uh, I was right near the front. I want to try and get the back if I can. You know what that reminded me of? I know it's a lot smaller. It reminded me of the Ultimate at Lightwater Valley that got smashed down. The track looked very similar, similar width, similar appearance. And uh, yeah, and it was it looked like it was built in house as well. I know it wasn't, but it looked like it was. <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me of the Ultimate. I don't know why, the track that is, and the colors as well. The theming was really good in there. A nice uh, dark ride section at the start, which was very nice. And uh, some good smells in there, some good theming. And then a nice little family coaster outside. So yeah, all round. Good stuff, and I'm gonna get back on again. So I'll see you soon. Yeah, again, fantastic ride on that. Uh, got the back row, very back row. So it was very uh, thrilling. You get dragged over the drops. So yeah, actually up the ante a little bit. Uh, definitely uh, rate that very highly as a family coaster. So mm, probably on par, hang on, it's coming. So probably not far off minifigure speedway, but I would put minifigure speedway just just slightly above this. Whereas uh, this is very close, it's very good. I'm just gonna show you what I mean about the ultimate track. Because it looks very, it even sounds like it when you're on it. A lot of the clanking noises are what you used to get when you're on the ultimate. It looks very similar to the ultimate track, doesn't it? It's a very terrain hugging sort of ride as well. So as you can see, just behind the drop there, the turnaround, and there's another one just over here. Yeah. Just been on a couple of the flat rides in the area. One thing I've noticed about this park, there's so many flat rides. I mean, a lot. Uh, I don't know why they do it here, but not at the other Merlin parks. Because Alton Towers and, uh, you know, places like that could do a lot more flat rides to soak up the queues, especially Alton Towers. And here they've got loads of them, so they can do it. But uh, yeah, a couple of them are pretty decent as well. I've not done the pirate ship, uh, but I am gonna go do the haunted, uh, the monster house party, whatever it's called. The Vicoma Madhouse. And I've still got to do the fairy tale brook. And then I might have a few more re-rides on the minifigure speedway. And then, uh, yeah, I think I might call it a day because it's, it's only like 2 p.m. now. So I've done pretty much everything already, which is good. Mm. 
so far. The uh, food prices are a bit less here. Hot dogs are definitely cheaper than Alton Towers here. But the pizza pasta buffet is the same price as Alton Towers, or roughly £21. Bit steep, that. I don't know who would want to eat pizza and pasta buffet when you're at a theme park. Never understood that. <laughs> anyway, making my way back through Mythica to head round the bottom end because I want to do some of the rides at the top end when we, that we missed when we first came in this morning. It's just started raining now and I've just watched a rendition of the Pirates of Skeleton Bay show. They, uh, they're just rehearsing it at the minute so none of the, none of the actors are in costume. They're just literally um, yeah, just doing the show but without costumes. Just heading around the lake section. And over here you've got the Legoland hotels. You've got two of them. So you've got this one. And then you've got this one, the Castle Hotel. So they're both around the lakeside. Which is nice. They're slightly out of the way, but uh, close enough to the park so you get access straight in. And then you've got the Deep Sea Adventure Ride there, which is actually closed this year. I think it's having a major refurb. So it's a shame I couldn't get on that one because I've heard it's pretty decent, but I'm sure I'll be back one day in the future and I'll get on it then. Now I've been stopped in my tracks. <laughs> Choo Choo's coming. I've not had a ride on that yet, actually. Um, I might have a go on that. Still a couple of rides for me to do, but yeah, it's just started quite, well, it's quite uh, raining quite heavy now, so. I might start to depart soon. I'm just going to get a couple of the big rides that I've not done and then I might head back. So I'm going to give the Haunted House Monster Party a go, which is the v Vicoma Madhouse. But I've got to say, the facade's pretty decent, but I don't like the big steel building behind it that you can just see there, look. I know they've painted some rubbish on the side of it, but it looks a bit tacky <laughs> being able to see the show building behind it, look. Wouldn't have cost much to clad that, would it? Or even paint it the same colour as this. Anyway, let's have a go on this, see what we think. You can see what I mean about the corrugated metal building behind me. You can definitely see it there. Yeah, for uh, the Coma Madhouse, that was pretty basic, to be honest. Uh, not the best one I've done of them. Hex Alton Towers is still by far the best one. It was, uh, yeah, it was okay. The kids loved it, I suppose. I actually felt a bit um, sicky in there. Where did we end up? Uh, but yeah, theming wise, very basic. Storyline, very basic. Um, yeah, just okay. It was nice to get warm and stay dry, to be honest. Anyway, one more ride I haven't been on yet is Fairy Tale Brook, wherever that is. So I'll see you on there. It's just a charming little boat ride. <laughs> Through the uh, fairy tale forest. <laughs> a bit like River Caves at the Pleasure Beach. Don't know what he's doing to her. <laughs> you get done for that nowadays. Nice to just sit down for five minutes or ten minutes. Very uh, charming and peaceful. Got the seven little people behind me. Snow White and the seven little people. <laughs> see. And uh, some wench there with a brush. <laughs> Gonna get cancelled just on this ride alone. Very charming little ride. As you can see, I'm very enthralled. <laughs> it's nice to be sat down, to be honest. And then uh, hopefully get some food because I'm not having much luck so far. Everywhere I've been, it's full meals, and I don't want a full meal. I just want a little snack. I don't want a hot dog either. I just want some fries or yeah, something quite small. Everything here is like a burger meal, a hot dog meal, or a chicken meal, or pizza and pasta buffet, or a hot dog. Do you not really fancy? Ooh, we're going into a cave. Ooh, <laughs> a fairy tale cave. So 
some of the accents are quite questionable in here. Your wish is my command, There's some very questionable accents in there. <laughs> Nobody told me we had a drop on here. Oh my God. <laughs> it's about two foot. <laughs> I think they just put it there to space the boats out. Oh no, what a soaker. A bit like the River Caves one. <laughs> this is even worse. Not even a splash. Oh, very disappointing. That's a bit of a jerky movement with his hand. <laughs> Let's have a little look around miniature land. I've not been in here yet. I had a little sneak preview walking through it earlier. Yeah, I'm not going to show you everything because I'm sure you'd get a rather bored looking at all this. It's better to come see it yourself. Oh wow, that bird even moves, that's great. Oh, it's a real bird. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these things, especially at the top end, do move, so I'm told anyway. Like a lot of the boats here move, the railways move, the cars move, all that sort of thing. I'm just headed up to the top section, which I think is where it's at. There's definitely a lot more moving up here. So you've got like little harbours and boats that move. It's so clever, they're all on cables under the water. I think you're supposed to put a die in the water so you can't see the cables, because I can see them. <laughs> I think the water's supposed to be like a blue colour. Tower Bridge. Got all the uh, buildings that you recognise, obviously. You've got the London Eye, which is also operated by Merlin. We've got southwestern trains down there. Oh, I do like this. The Horse Guards Parade. And it actually moves, that's very clever. <laughs> Even the legs are moving. You see what I mean about the trucks moving? They actually uh, drive on the roads. They've obviously got magnets underneath. It's very clever. And Windsor Castle, a Lego version. Bearing in mind you can see the real one just behind us on the valley. Yeah, I'd love to film all of it for you, but yeah, I think it gets rather boring after about two minutes. I don't really know what to say about it <laughs> other than look. <laughs> I, was, I must admit, when I watch other people's vlogs, and they do Miniland, I do skip it. Because uh, unless you're actually here looking for yourself, I think it's rather boring on the camera. I well, like that. I've actually got an underground train, look. And an underground station. That's pretty smart. With a glass panel so you can see. I'll get you close in. Does it look like you're actually flying around? <laughs> Another train coming, look. It's actually pretty neat. We've got a truck coming. Yeah, I do I do like the magnet truck things or the magnet vehicles. Yeah, it's rather impressive. Imagine sitting and making these, and I know it's somebody's job as well to sit and actually make these by hand. Or oh, so we're told anyway. And then we head round to Moulin Rouge. Sacre Coeur. Been there. And then the Swiss section here. It's even got a cable car look. And it moves. <laughs> it's coming down. I love how they've got a fishing boat down there with a shark following it. It's pretty accurate for Australia. Yeah, brilliant. So I've been in here about an hour just wandering around, just showing you a couple of highlights because, like I said, don't want it to get too boring for you. So I think I'm going to have a, another ride on the uh, minifigure speedway. And then I think we're going to head out because it's just started to rain again. And I think it's time to go. Been here quite a while now, it's just hit 4pm. Just have one final ride on Minifigure Speedway. 
and it was really good. Even though it was raining, it stopped just as I got on the ride, which was good. And it was very fast, very rapid. Um, yeah, I love that ride, it's really good. So my two favorite rides here would be, well, three actually. I'll say Minifigure Speedway, the Dragon Coaster, and the Flight of the Skyline, uh, the uh, Flying Theater. They were all exceptional, I should say. Now, I'm just heading up the hill, back to the entrance, up all these stairs. I'm not getting the train this time. So you might get me out of breath in a minute. <laughs> Huffing like a donkey, as Martin Zero would say. Um, yeah, absolutely love today. Actually enjoyed it more than what I thought I would. My, miss, my preconception of coming here was that it's gonna be a kid's park and I'm gonna get bored after a couple of hours and I'm just gonna do the rides and leave, but I've actually enjoyed it. A lot of the rides are actually really good. I say it's, it is a kid's park, but probably board, bordering on the family side as well. So I'm getting out of breath already. So yeah, it was much better than what I thought. But it's one of those places where I probably won't come back now for a good five, 10 years. I've been, I can say I've been, got the credits, take it off. And I probably will only come back if they have some pretty major investment or a big ride or something. Because yeah, I've done it all. And it's not the kind of place I would be gagging to come back to, especially if I'm coming down south. I would be more likely to go to Thorpe Park or Chessington. And that's where I'm going tomorrow, Chessington. Another park for me that I've never been to. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed our little vlog from Legoland Windsor. If you've got kids, they'll absolutely love it. Do come down and check it out. Uh, or do what I've done, get a Merlin Pass. So you can do Legoland, Chessington and Thorpe Park all in one go. So yeah, thank you very much for joining me on this video at Legoland Windsor. I'll see you in the next video next week. Bye for now.